Which you guys got another video. We done 10 bad things. Now let's do 10 good things about mini PCs. So the first thing is space saving design. It takes up minimal desk space due to its small form factor. So this is probably a very big plus sign for a lot of people that are very tight on space, or maybe they just want it for say a camper home or something like that. Next, we got portability. Their compact form factor allows you to easily transport, making them suitable for users who need to work on the go. It's easy portable in the sense of you could take this abroad. It's much smaller than say a laptop. So that's definitely a plus. Next up, many PCs can have less cable clutter than full size computers because of their small form factor. You can see here, you can have this down to say, for instance, even just two cables, a power cable and a HDMI cable. And there's your ethernet cable there. You can even remove this and just have Wi-Fi if you wanted to. And that would only leave you two cables, which is very minimal compared to say, for instance, a large desktop PC. So if you're one of those people that like less clutter, then a mini PC could be for you. Now, some mini PCs have had Wi-Fi antennas on the bottom of the mini PC, and that is a big no-no because it will block the signal. You definitely want to get one with a plastic top where the Wi-Fi antennas are on the top, and that will give you much better signal for Wi-Fi if you do want to use a Wi-Fi uh, capability. Next up, mountable options. Many mini PCs can be mounted behind the monitor to further save space by using the VESA mount like you see right here. Some of these come with VESA mounts where you could just mount this onto the back of the mini PC and then just put it onto the back of your monitor and or TV even, and you could just put that on the back there and just have a couple of cables coming down and you'll be good to go. Uh, you won't see any PC and it will uh, definitely have hardly any cables because you can put them down into some form of trunking and you won't see the cables at all. This is why they're so popular in office PCs because they will just mount them behind the monitor, as you can see on the screen right here. Next, let's talk about uh, the next option, which I think is pretty good, is using these as media servers. You can mount a mini PC on the back of a TV set and it will work as a client, display media from the internet or from your PC or NAS or network or attached network storage. So you can use those for these as well, which I think is a really big plus sign. You just need a remote like this and it makes things super easy. Put the dongle in the front and you can control everything from here. And the good thing about these is they have a little keyboard on the back of them. So you don't have to have a big chunky keyboard lying around. This is just like a remote control. It's super useful and super easy with mini PCs. If you want to turn this into an own media server or some sort of like Plex server or something like that, you can use this method. It really is decent for that. And that is probably one of the big reasons why a lot of people will buy mini PCs for that particular reason, because you could tuck this away somewhere and you would not even know it's there and you can get access to all your media. Some mini PCs are even uh, like a NAS. You can see here we do have a mini PC that has four bays on it, which means we can put in four NVMe drives on this one. And there's ones out there that take up to eight. And I've showed you videos on these before. I've just got this one to hand because it was close to me. But basically, yeah, you can make this into a NAS and uh, put whatever operating system you want on there. Affordability, that's another reason. They offer a budget-friendly options for many people who just need basic computing. Something like this is a really cheap option. You can put this on and you can see you can turn this into a home media server as well. It's everyday performance. Most of the mini PCs can handle basic tasks like web browsing, document editing and also and even media playback with adequate performance this little machine here has got two LAN ports on here which is great for a media server as well if you wanted to put on here uh, some sort of media software like true nas or something like that they're cost effective as well often priced lower than traditional desktops with similar processing power making them a budget friendly option as you can see this b-link eq14 mini pc here has an intel 12th processor which is the n150 that's four cores and four threads which is probably plenty for a lot of people comes with 16 gigabytes of ddr4 memory and only a 500 gigabyte ssd that can be upgraded as well so you have two one gig nicks on here as well and also this is only 25 watts tdp wi-fi 6 on this and bluetooth 5.2 with 4k dual display capability which is very affordable for a lot of people especially if you just want to browse the internet 
watch YouTube videos or maybe stream some movies, it can uh, be pretty affordable. This one is £168. This is the N100 uh, version and it's 16 gigs of DDR4. 512 gigabyte SSD, which is upgradable, it has Windows 11 Pro on it, and it also has uh, Bluetooth 4.2 on this one, and also 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN and Wi Fi 5. And it also has a Type C port on here. It's £168, and you can get £11 off of that as well, which makes it quite affordable. So if you're looking for something that just does basic computing, then one of these cheaper ones will be ideal. As you can see here, they're also energy efficient, which is another good thing. Generally consuming less power than a full-size desktop, many PCs can help lower your electric bills, believe it or not. And this will sit in a corner and you can use it working away. Now, a lot of these budget ones are silent operation. They are pretty quiet to run, but don't get that confused with some of the higher end ones because they can get quite noisy under full load because of the uh, powerful CPUs in them. But they are highly efficient and also low noise, uh, these budget ones. So that is a plus sign for the budget uh, model that if you're looking for just a cheap budget uh, mini PC, then these will run quietly, more quiet than, say, some of the ones I've reviewed, which have pretty high end CPUs in them. And if you're worrying about upgradability, this one is got space for another drive in here if you need more space now i know i made that one of my 10 bad things but people misheard what i said it's on some mini pcs are designed to be easily upgraded while some of them are not they have surface mounted uh, parts on them so you have to be very very careful in which ones you're going for but again uh, upgradability is there on some models and on some models it's not but this one you can put another drive in here you can replace all of this stuff and you can also upgrade the uh, memory on a lot of the mini PCs as well. So that is a plus sign as well as a negative if you're looking at some of the models out there. Just be careful which ones you're getting and do your research and check YouTube channels that do full reviews. Also, GPU. We're going to be talking about that because you can connect an eGPU to the internal M.2 PCI Express port or use the Oculink port uh, on these mini PCs. Now, Minis Forum uh, do some really decent mini PCs. I keep uh, promoting those because they are one of the best, if not, if not the best on the market for mini PCs right now, uh, especially new mini PCs. Again, you're getting 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports on here, plus DP port, HDMI port, Type-C, USB ports, and that Oculink, which is really good. And these are not that expensive. You can pick these up pretty cheap. The base model on these is pretty affordable. Uh, but yeah, I've done reviews on all of these uh, products. If you want to check my channel for mini PCs, then check. I'll do a full review on all my stuff. You can see good cooling on these ones as well. And that's why I like Minis Forums. They do actually put decent cooling on their mini PCs. And there's plenty of upgradability on this particular model because there is loads of room for storage here. We've got, I think, three on this side here. And I can't remember what was on the other side I'll have to check my you'll have to check my video for a full review of this. But anyway, now on my top 10 bad things about mini PCs, I was using mini PCs as a reference. I wasn't saying those mini PCs are bad. I'm just giving you an opinion on what could be bad on some mini PCs, not the ones that you were seeing on that video. The same thing with good mini PCs. There's not particularly talking about these mini PCs. I'm just using these as a reference so I can give you some of the options to, to look out for when you are literally buying a mini PC. So when I read comments, when people say I have a mini PC and it's upgradable and you said it's not upgradable, I'm talking about some mini PCs are not upgradable, not all. So just bear that in mind and listen to what I'm actually saying. This mini PC that you're looking at right here has a full socket on it which has a CPU, which is upgradable. A lot of mini PCs have surface mounted uh, CPUs, which are not upgradable. So that would come under not upgradable uh, mini PC, whereas this one would be. So bear that all in mind when you're looking for a mini PC, make sure it ticks all the boxes on all the things you're looking for in a mini PC. And hopefully you'll be able to get the right mini PC for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below what you think is good about mini PCs. A quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>